Hi everyone and welcome back after a month's break to Fridays with Fenning. I hope you've had a good summer and do say hi in the comments. I'd love to know who's watching, you know, whether you're watching live or on catch up. Now, let me start today with a question. What's the best thing about your job? You know, whether paid or voluntary, whether you work from home or you head out to work, you know, what is it that you love to do, that you gain energy from, that gives that real sense of purpose and joy? I ask because every job has some great bits, some mundane bits and some bits that just drain us. And so what we want is that the answer that we give to that question should be a major part of our job. Because if so, we're going to thrive at work. And if not, well, work can become a drudgery. It can just be a job and not a joy. And because for many of us, we spend so much time at work, I think it's really important to find joy in what we do. So what's the best part of your job? I mean, just drop your answers into the comments as honestly, I'm intrigued to know. Now, I love my job. I love working uh, with the people that I work with. They're fun and full of integrity. I love the variety of my work too. But I think the one thing that stands out as the favourite part of my job is something that I've been doing for over 25 years, working alongside various great leaders, meeting amazing people, experiencing a vulnerability in people that I rarely see elsewhere and seeing a transformation in people's outlook on life and faith. So what's my favourite part of the job that I do? Well, I think it's being involved in Alpha, which is a simple 10-week introduction to the Christian faith, where people who are either spiritually curious or, or those who are newer to faith, they can come together to learn and ask questions and explore some of life's big questions. Now, why do I love it so much? Well, first of all, because I love spending time with people who are exploring or who are new to faith. I, I love to listen to their questions, to hear their thinking, you know, to share some of what I'm learning and, and to see people begin this journey of understanding the message of Jesus and what that means for them. Now, not everyone who attends is overtly curious. I mean, I remember Nathan being invited by Alan, who really stitched him up. I mean, Alan told Nathan that it wasn't religious, that it was just a place to go and share his problems. So when Nathan arrived, he was like this rabbit in headlights, watching a video about Jesus. Yet, because it involved free food and drink, and because people were genuinely interested in him, Nathan came back. Now, initially to try and win us over to the dark side, so he told us, but he kept on coming and he lowered his defences and began his journey of faith. Now, Nathan loved Alpha so much that he invited some friends up from Kent to do the next Alpha course. And Russian Steve, yep, that was his nickname, Russian Steve arrived week one having consumed copious amounts of alcohol beforehand. And I remember uh, watching his plate of chili con carne slowly slip off his lap and flip upside down onto the plain living room carpet of my parents' house. You know, I remember one of the hardest yet most amazing Alpha courses that took place it happened just a number of years ago. You know, two people invited their friends to attend Alpha at our home. We then discovered on arrival that one of the guests had had an affair with the other guest's spouse. Now, they both knew, but they both still wanted to come. So we quickly sat them either side of the room and broke into separate discussion groups, trying to keep them apart to make life a little bit easier for them. Well, amazingly, they both kept coming. Uh, and when it came to the day that we spend together, the offended party actually prayed with and for the other person. It was extraordinary. So many tears. It was so powerful. And I love the simplicity of Alpha. You know, pre-COVID, we would often just gather in a home, eat a meal together, watch a video, and then discuss what we'd watched. You know, basically just giving an opportunity for people to ask questions or to say what they thought. The setup was minimal. Hospitality was amazing as the main meals were provided free by some brilliant cooks uh, who are part of the church. And I love the vulnerability and honesty of the guests. 
You know, often at the start of the Alpha course, we ask people why they've chosen to attend. And so often the answer is because a friend of theirs is a Christian and there's something different about them that they want, whether that's a peace or a confidence. And we're often surprised by how vulnerable people are straight away. And because it's a safe place, it builds this bond in the group. <clears throat> and, and very often at the end of the course, people just don't want it to finish. You know, we laugh so much as, uh, as we do icebreaker questions, you know, swapping stories of embarrassing moments or interesting scars or other weird questions. Now, does everyone find faith who does Alpha? Well, no, of course not. But most will leave at least with having a greater understanding of God and a more positive view of faith and of the Christian community. You know, looking back over 25 years, there have been hundreds of people who have started on their journey of faith through attending Alpha. It's a safe place to ask questions, to share doubts and explore with others some of the big questions of life. There's no judgment. There's no stupid questions and hopefully no pressure to believe. You know, I have to say that I, I wondered whether Alpha would work when lockdown happened and we moved it online. Now, obviously, we missed uh, the meals together, but, but this past course has shown that community can be built online, that vulnerability and honesty can, can happen on Zoom, and ultimately that life change can happen for people online. You know, six weeks ago, Kirsty, who was on our most recent Alpha course, you know, she'd attended church for many years and had never made a commitment to following Jesus because of all of her questions and doubts. Well, she went for a walk after an Alpha Zoom call and she prayed and became a Christian. And you know what? The following week after Alpha, Kirsty texted me uh, these words. She says, something really resonated with me during tonight's Alpha. I think it suddenly clicked how loved I am and that I'm actually a child of God. It was quite overwhelming. So are you watching this and would you consider yourself spiritually curious? Do you have questions about life and faith and want a safe place to ask those questions and talk about life? Then can I encourage you to be part of the next Alpha course that Sarah, my wife and I are leading on Zoom. You know, starting uh, Tuesday the 6th of October from 7 p.m. to 8 15 p.m. and it doesn't matter where you live because you don't have to go out you can just log in and be part of the Alpha community so to join please email me at steve.fenning at forgechurch.com or go to the Forge website and book uh, through our next steps page and if you're already convinced but have friends who are curious, please invite them to join too. You know, Alpha is one of the best bits of what I do and I would love you to be a part of that too. So have a great weekend and please join us this Sunday for part two of Taskmaster, our new September series. You're going to love it. And we also have a baptism included. And guess what? Rachel, who's being baptised, has just done Alpha too. Boom. Hey, you take care.